What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back. Oh, let me um, my face look greasy, bitch. I just came back from work, okay? Um, and girl, I'm back home doing it at home because I don't go to work too on Wednesday, and I'm recording this <laughs> on Tuesday, so y'all can have it on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Let me tell you something. This weather. Baby, the legs been out for the past two weeks, okay? For the past two weeks, the legs been out, and I'm loving it. You know what I'm saying? A couple of days, it was a little bit hot. I was like, bitch, you out your mind, but I can't complain, okay? But anyway, I hope everybody has been doing well. Um, when we start this video off, I want to start off shouting out a couple of people. Um, first of all, I want to send a really, really big, huge shout out to... Um, a person that I actually brought to you guys and spoke about a couple of times on this channel, Miss June BLC. You know, if you have not checked out her channel, please go over there, check out her channel, subscribe to her channel. She needs to get like to 500 subscribers and, you know, I really want her to get there. Um, if you don't remember me talking about her, Miss June, her, her YouTube channel is June BLC, okay? And this is the lady that I was telling you guys who was um, going through her battle with cancer and things like that. She hit me up and this is the reason why I am, you know, giving her another shout out because I love hearing updates. You know, she was just telling me when we first started communicating a lot about what was going on with her can uh, cancer journey, knowing that I have somebody in my life that is going through the exact same thing. Um, cancer and we're trying to get her in remission and to get um, it was early in the morning early in the morning girl I was like what is this I didn't even look at it until I woke up woke up because I didn't want to you know misread anything by being asleep but she gave me an update and said you know they did blood tests they did all the other tests that they needed to do and she is finally in remission so I am so proud to hear the good news about that um, congratulations to you, Miss June. Um, I just, my prayers, y'all go over there and talk to her. Go, go subscribe to her channel. Give her some support. You know, um, it is a beautiful thing. And I wish that on every cancer person that's going through cancer, a cancer battle or any type of illness that you guys get healed from it. You get remission, you know, and not remission. That's just for a year or a few months. No, a long term remission, you know, um, that's beautiful, and I love to start my videos off with some positivity. Um, you know, so congratulations, Miss June. I wish you all of the best. Um, moving on from that, shout out to Tay Brene. Um, she has a YouTube channel, and she's actually doing mostly reviews on, you know, um, <clears throat> restaurants around ATL in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? She did have some little, like... Uh, reviews on reality shows, not that much, but it's mostly focused on restaurants within the uh, Atlanta area and doing vlogging and things like that. I did see one of her latest uh, videos was about the Lanithia, okay, Lanithia Lounge, you know. Nene got her lounge open, girls. Okay, y'all going down there? I got to look at the video because I said I was going to look at it when I come home, but make sure y'all look for her. Her name is Tay, T-A-Y, uh, Brene. That's what I hope it is, B-R-Y-N-A-E. Okay, I will put all of this in the more info box. And um, Alexandria, that's her name, and she has a music video that's called Come On. Okay, C apostrophe M-O-N, you know, and I will put the link down in the more info box. She is a music, she's working on her music, and she is a recent graduate student just focusing on her dreams and all of that. So you guys go over there, lend these people support, okay? It takes nothing just to click on the link and to type their name in and to just see what you like, whatever, give them a view, give them a subscriber, anything to do to help them out. But um, let's just get into this video. Now that we got all of the housekeeping out the way and the good news out the way, let's get into this video. Okay, pause. So when it comes to good news, I'm I'm putting it out there. I hope I'm not jinxing myself, but so I'm in the process of trying to get this apartment, right? And, you know, it's been hell, okay? It has been hell tr on earth trying to do all of this stuff, all right? You know, I get, I see something that I like, I can afford it. 
is great. I get ready to go see it. Oh, somebody just snatched it up. Or, oh, we got to cancel because this person that did this. Or, oh, we got other people that's looking at it. So I don't know if you might even be in the running to get it because you got so many other people ahead. I'm like, oh my God. And then I went to go look at one that I had my heart set on, right? And this is where it goes that looks can be deceiving, bitch. Okay. Oh, what's that? Looks can be deceiving. Now the picture and everything was cool. And this apartment was literally, it was condos and stuff like that. Loft styles and shit. And I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, whatever. I'm looking at the building. And I said, I know where that's at. That's right there of like five minutes away from my job. I can literally walk to work. And that is the whole thing that I'm trying to do. Trying to get it in an area where it's closer to my job. You know, within that uh, area, whatever. Vicinity and all that shit. And I was like, my heart said on here, this is a good price. You know what I'm saying? You know, two bedrooms. You know, I can have my bedroom. Then we uh, a studio up in there. You know, and I need a couple of fucking closets and shit. Because, bitch, if I turn this camera around and y'all see the pal, I have... I'm embarrassed, okay? It's piles of clothes, and they're clean. I just have nowhere to put them. I have a dresser. It's full. I have a closet. It's full. I have a couple of bins. Full. Clothes, okay? Just clothes, you know? And I'm like, I gotta get this organized. I go to see the apartment, and... It was two of them in the same building. And I was like, the first one, you know, it was like, eh, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even really clean. I said, for as much as y'all got a doorman and it's all clean down in the lobby and everybody all, you know, uppity looking or whatever the fuck, you know, look like they got jobs. Okay, they got jobs, you know. And this how you keep the apartment. You're going to show me the apartment. The tub wasn't even all the way clean. The thing at the bottom of the freaking laundry room was coming up. And I was like, what is this? The stove was dirty. I said, it was all smear stains and shit like that. Soap scum stains. I said, uh-uh. No, take me to the next one. Take me to the next one. So the next one was a little bit bigger. But the only drawback was it didn't have no doors on the... um. No doors on the bedrooms, you know what I'm saying? And then you went, it didn't have no lights in there, so you have to bring your own lights. So I said, bitch, I ain't got time for this, okay? I don't have time for this for as much money as that costs. Bitch, y'all need to have lights and doors up in here. Other than that, I just couldn't deal with it. So now I got another apartment that's close to my job, too, that I'm looking at. And hopefully, like I filled out the application, you know, did all that shit. We've been in constant communication. It feels like the realtor is really on my side trying to push to get um, me to get this apartment. And if I get it, hopefully I get good news before the week is out that I got it. If I don't, bitch, I'm going to cut somebody out. I'm going to just say, fuck it, okay? I'm going to just be like, it's not meant for me to leave this fucking area. I'm trying to do better with my life. And I just want to get to better. <laughs> Like, I swear to God, once I move, I will feel so much better because if y'all don't understand, like, I never realized how moving can be so stressful, you know what I'm saying, because it's been a long time since I moved, and, you know, I believe I was stressed out then, okay? Bitch, I've just been so stressed out, and it's just, oh my God, it's been affecting my mood and everything, and I know as soon as I get the apartment, I'm sorry to keep on... It's not, it's, as soon as I get into the better environment, I just be able to breathe. I just be able to breathe. I'm gonna just put it like that. If y'all experience some shit and y'all got some tips or whatever, bitch, put me down, okay? Like, we here to help each other, all right? But anyway, let's just get into the video because it really wasn't much, much that's been on this week, you know? Um, we got news that Hocus Pocus 2 is coming out um, in 2022 in the fall, which, of course, is probably going to be at the end of September. September, beginning of October, or in the middle of October. Most likely, probably at the end of September, so we can have the whole month of October to watch it on Disney+. Plus. Okay? And if that's the case, did they put Hocus Pocus 1 on um, um Disney Plus yet? Because if they have it, they need to go ahead and do that, alright? Because, let me tell you something, I was one of the girls that was late to Hocus Pocus. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest. A few years ago, whatever, everybody always used to be like, oh shit, it's Halloween, that means Hocus Pocus finna come away. <laughs> like these grown-ass people. Grown-ass people, and I'm sitting here like, the fuck? <laughs> the fuck like i see i knew the gist of the story or whatever but i never had actually seen the movie but then you know like a few years ago 
I said, bitch, Ashley, just stop it. Just stop it like a couple of, like three years ago or something. I just went on ahead and looked at it just to see what the hype was. Hype was about it. And it's one of my favorite Halloween movies. <laughs> it's so corny. Like movies from back then, they're so corny when you look at it as an adult. And when y'all told me to go ahead and look at Tales from the Hood and y'all was talking about how fucking scary that shit is, the little niggas and shit like that. Bitch, I'm sitting here looking at the whole movie all the way through because I used to see clips and stuff. I never used to get it at the beginning. It always used to be in the middle or the end. And I hate looking at movies in the middle or end. I need to see it from the beginning. And when I put that on, bitch, I was sitting here looking at it like this. I'm just going to say that y'all must have been really young kids to think that Tales from the Hood was actually scary. That's all I'm just going to say. I'm going to give it to y'all. I'm going to let y'all have that because me as an adult watching it in four, I was sitting here like, bitch, what? This is, I get it. I, I, I liked it. I liked it. But where was the scary part? Y'all so, <laughs> anything scary, y'all. Ooh, bitch, my shadow. <laughs> Hey, stop playing with y'all. But yes, yeah, Hocus Pocus too, bitch. Um, I'm gonna watch it. I don't have no hopes. You know, with these reboots and stuff, whatever. I have no hopes and I have no expectations for it. I'm just gonna watch it and, you know, I'll talk shit or applaud it later. That's what I do. Same thing like when Coming to America 2 came out. I had no hopes for that shit to be good, okay? And surprisingly, I actually liked it. I was one of the few that actually liked it. I wasn't expecting it to be like the first one because I knew it couldn't match the first one. But, um... Yeah, no high expectations for me, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, then we get into some mess. And speaking of Disney, um, Sebastian, what's his name? Samuel E. Wright. He voiced Sebastian. Uh, in The Little Mermaid. Mind you, when you look at his picture, he looks just like him. I said, did y'all do this on purpose? He a black man, too. I said, did y'all do this on purpose? Under the sea. Let me tell you something. That, if you know me, you know this is hurting me a little bit because The Little Mermaid is my ultimate all forever of all time favorite Disney movie, okay? And then it's The Lion King, you know? And he actually played Mufasa. He was the first one to play Mufasa in the adaptation of the Broadway play for um the lion king i said bitch come on come on keep it up in the disney family bitch you know what i'm saying but he passed away he was uh 74 years old i said that is crazy and speaking of the lion king did y'all look at the uh real housewives of beverly hills they got a new girl on there uh asian lady i think she's uh chinese american her husband white guy he was the one that directed the lion king the original i said girl I know y'all getting money. Y'all eating over there, bitch. <laughs> y'all eating over there, okay? Bitch, that, that's crazy. But rest in peace to Mr. Samuel. You know, you played a huge part in my childhood, so you will forever be in my heart, okay? And condolences to his uh, family and friends. Moving on from that, uh, Chrissy Teigen. Bitch, let me just tell y'all this. I want, when I when I tell y'all what's going on with this situation, I just want y'all to do this. Anybody that has any type of goal, aspiration, or dream to become some type of public figure, some type of famous person, a celebrity, or whatever, whatever field it is that's going to garner you a whole bunch of attention that probably will bring media around or whatever, put you in the spotlight in whatever way, please... As the adult that you are right now, go and scrub your goddamn Twitter, okay? Scrub all your social media accounts because the people that we were back in the day, and I'm pretty sure all of us have said some fucked up things, okay? I can, um, pr I probably said some fucked up things. Not on the line of telling somebody to go kill himself or, you know, calling somebody, you know, out their name or slurs and shit like that. But, you know, I just got a mouth on me. So I, I already know I'd probably said some fucked up things about somebody, but never taking it to that far. If you're going to get into the spotlight in, in the industry and stuff like that, just scrub your Twitter, okay? Scrub your social media, deactivate that bitch and start a new one, okay? Because, listen, don't think that the shit that you uh, didn't tweet back in the day can't come up and bite you in the ass. The things that you said back in the day cannot come back and bite you in the ass. We've seen it happen multiple times. 
all the time. And the recent victim of that is Chrissy Teigen, a.k.a. John Legend's wife. Truth be told, you know, she's annoying. And I'm one of those ones who I don't necessarily like her, okay? I don't dislike her. I find her annoying. But when she do her little clap back sometimes, I, I be chuckling at it because she do. She can't clap back, you know. But for the most part, I just didn't get her. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get the hype or anything about her. Um, I guess the last week or probably towards the end of the week before that, uh, this girl came out. What's her name? Um, Courtney Stoden. She came out and she was basically saying that um, back in 2011 and 2012, when she was just 16 years old, Chrissy Teigen was cyberbullying her. Chrissy Teigen is a grown ass woman still at that age, at 2011, 2012. You know what I'm saying? She's a grown ass woman and you're cyberbullying a 16 year old and you told them to told her to go kill herself. And then you were still in her uh, DM cyberbullying her. Okay. I don't know what prompted this to be put out, but it got out. Chrissy Teigen tried to, you know, put some tweets out there to apologize or take accountability, her version of accountability for what she said, what she did. And I was like, after you didn't tell somebody to go kill themselves, especially a child, and you know how people are and kids are and, you know, the, the way, girl, no, no, you really thought that that was going to be it. You needed to call that girl up, that woman up. And to personally tell her that you apologize, okay, and be prepared for the fallout, okay? And the fallout is coming. Uh, <clears throat> multiple retailers have been distancing themselves from Christy Teigen. I didn't know she had some cookware. Did I know that? I didn't know she had some cookware. I did know she had some. Don't she have cooking books or something? I think I seen a book of hers or something at my... um at my job or whatever but uh you got popular retailers like macy's and bloomingdale's who you know ended business with her um target no longer is co co uh, covering her stuff carrying her cookware line or whatever it's just you know a lot of people you have to that's why I say, watch what you say. First of all, why are we online cyberbullying people? If we don't agree with what somebody says, if we don't like how somebody look or what they say or how they act or how they dress or how they talk, block them and keep going. Why are they on your forefront? Why are they on your mind? Why do you waste your time and energy to attack them, especially if they haven't done anything to you, okay? Just because you don't like them or something about them don't sit well with you. I don't fuck with Christy Teigen like that. So I'm not going to get on here and, and, and attack her and, and, and say, girl, you this and you think you are that or whatever. Girl, no, nah, that's a waste of energy. I don't see how people do that, okay? Like... I got my own problems. I don't care about what's going on over there, okay? So why are we on here cyberbullying and making other people's lives miserable? You don't even know what these people are going through, especially young people, you know? We in this whole social media age where people think that they got to, you know, grow up so fast and they have to have stuff accomplished all so quick or whatever. Listen, bitch, I'm still sitting here trying to get this shit popping, okay? Uh, waiting for my opportunity and still working towards that, okay? Shit don't happen like that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, people stressed out about that and you out here cyberbullying and attacking and all this stuff, like, what is the point? If you ever been a bully, truth moment, like, let's be honest, if you ever been a bully, whether it was on the internet, whether it was in person, you know, you've been bullied at work or you've been the bully at work or you've been the bully at school, put it down in the comments, bitch. I want to know if some of y'all going to own up to your shit, okay? Own up, did no judgment because... I hope that you learned your lesson that you don't need to be doing that. But Chrissy, you dead ass wrong. And whatever comes to you, bitch, it needs to come. Meanwhile, um, this nigga needs to be stopped, okay? Now, I know what I said the last time. Like, people not really going in on Nick Cannon the way that they go on, go in on, like, Future and NBA Youngboy. They go in on NBA Youngboy because he's young as fuck and he's still producing a whole bunch of kids. And it's a possibility that he got another kid on the way with his current girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? That'll make, like, eight, something like that. Future, on the other hand, you know... He got kids that he don't all see. 
the baby mamas is always up in the news or on the blogs talking about, you know, he don't want to spend time or he don't want to pay child support and shit like that. Don't produce kids if you know you're not going to be able to take care of them or you don't want to take care of them, okay? You don't want to assume that responsibility of being a father, okay? And being a father is more than financial. You know what I'm saying? Then we got Nick Cannon. I think more people accepted him because of the simple fact that, one, he was once married to Mary J. Blast. I mean, Mariah Carey. It was an N-word, so that's why I just came out. <laughs> Mariah Carey, okay? Ooh, excuse me. And because she's Mariah Carey. And then because, you know, we don't ever see any of his baby mothers complaining. And they seem to be like in this, like he got his own little tribe. They're all cool with each other. They're okay with the fact that he got multiple kids at the same time by a couple of women. Like, it's just, it's just crazy. It's, it's weird. And he can afford to do it. But at this point in time, just because you can afford to have these kids... It's like I feel like the kids suffer because they're not having your time 100% of the time. You have to divide yourself into different households. Unless you're going to put all of your kids and all your baby mama in one big ass house and be like Sister Wives. When Sister Wives first came on, remember when they was in Utah living in that big ass house and they had their different houses within the house? Unless you're going to do some shit like that and nine out of he can afford to do something like that. Them kids are not getting, not going to get the same quality time that they need, you know, from him as a father. If he keeps spreading his seed out here like that, he got another lady pregnant, allegedly. Mind you, he we just talked about last month, what's her name, Abby De La Rose or something like that. She is pregnant with twins, you know, after he just got through having a baby. He has a newborn baby from um, the same, what is her name, Brittany Bell or whatever, you know, that was one of the Wild and Out girls on his staff. And, you know, this is his second baby with her, plus Mariah Carey's two twins, you know, uh, twins, I should say. And that's what, four? That's four, two from each of them, okay? Then you got this girl, Debbie De La Rosa or Abby, whatever her name is. She's having twins, I believe. Yeah, she's having twins, so that's six. And I'm like, this other chick who um, worked as a wild and out girl, she came out. She didn't necessarily confirm that that uh, she's pregnant by Nick Cannon, but the baby's last name is Cannon. And somebody was like, what? Like in Nick Cannon, she's working as a wild and out girl on the show. So, of course, two and two plus two equals six. Two and two, that's four plus two, that's another two. Six, okay? For somebody that was trying to correct my math, because, bitch, I had to think about it myself. Did I get that right? Okay, yeah. You know, I'm sitting here like, so you just fucking your co-workers? You, you're fucking your employees? I don't like that. Like, something about that just don't sit well with me. And then it's all... They all have a type. He has a type. Look at the girls, okay? But, um... That nigga took the verse... Be fruitful and multiply seriously. And I think he just all about just having a whole bunch of kids. I think that's his philosophy. And I mean, I get it. But like I said, I feel for the kids because they ain't going to... Girl, they, daddy got to split time between this person and this person. He's only one person I can't be at. Girl, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. Um, But hey, you want to do it? You go ahead and do what you got to do, Nick. Um, please strap that shit up. He is allergic to condoms of all kinds, okay? Of all kinds. Bitch, if you're allergic to latex, get lambskin. If you're allergic to that, bitch, he don't even know what the pull-out method is. He don't know how not to ejaculate is, bitch. Girl, I just don't know. I would be scared to come across him, even though I'm not his type and he damn sure ain't mine. But, bitch, he look at a bitch and he'll get them pregnant. You, next. Boop. Check, go to the doctor and check. Nine months later, we got a little thing. I ain't even fucked the bitch, just looked at him, you know? Girl, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that, but hey, congratulations, I guess. Anyway, moving on. Um, <clears throat> Russell Simmons and uh, Kamora Lee. Girl, Russell Simmons is still over there in Bali, in Indonesia, I believe. You know, he trying to avoid getting charged with sexual harassment, rape uh, allegations, I believe, or whatever. So, he oversees. That's why he over there. Bitch, if he was innocent, he'll, he'll bring his ass over here and fight that shit. But, of course not. 
Um, so basically, he filed a lawsuit against Kimora claiming and her new husband. Let me tell you something. Kimora has had at least three partners that we know after um, Russell and her broke up. And she'd have had a kid by each one of them. Girl. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> unless, unless these celebrities are just like niggas. They are just like regular folks with money. They are a mess. Anyway, moving on from that, um, back to what was being said. He is suing them um, allegedly for transferring his shares of an energy drink called Celsius to a pay bond in connection with criminal charges against Kamora's husband, Tim. Um... He said that he invested tens of millions of dollars into the company and Kamora and her children are shocked by the extortive harassment, um, harassment that is coming from her ex-husband. You know, basically trying to say that Kamora was stealing, Kamora and her husband was stealing shares of this energy drink situation that they got, you know, going on. And at this point, Kamora is like, bitch, fuck that fuck you and what you're not gonna do is you're not gonna try me okay she said not only is the um lawsuit frivolous russell is the actual one that owes her millions of dollars in unpaid business loans and you know he has to be held accountable for his serial abuse okay and his baseless came claims i was like wait a minute abuse abuse now see see it ain't looking good it ain't looking good. If you already got people making allegations against you, I don't know why would you want to make something like this public and people to start digging and bringing your name back in the press for shit that, you know, they claim that you did. It's just a mess. Um, I don't know. It's not looking good for Mr. Russell. Uh, Kimora looked like she got more of a standing ground if she can prove it. But like I said, Russell ain't coming back over here. So I don't know. Um, moving on from that. Portia fucking Williams. With friends like these, why do we need enemies? Okay. So, you know, this whole situation with Portia and Simon, it's like every other day we got something new that comes out. And I'm just keeping y'all updated or whatever, just in case somebody wants to know. All right. So I was scrolling on the interwebs and I went on the blogs of the shade room and somebody had posted, you know, a picture of. I think it was Simon or whatever. And then Portia had commented on it and it was like, you know, said something, you know, cute or whatever to him. I was like, girl, you lying. You lying. You know what it reminded me of? Sammy reminds me of Michael from 90 Day Fiance. You know, Michael and Angela. Girl, have y'all been watching that? <laughs> Angela got her boobs reduced and she got that, um... Uh, uh, weight loss surgery at the same damn time and the doctor on there that did the surgery is the one that did the gorilla girl uh glue girl's hair i said man you better get your little fan because you did a good job right in there she was mad that he took off uh instead of one pound each from each boob she had to take had to take off uh two pounds and michael is pissed off about the fact that her boobs ain't as big like the reason why you want her is because of her big boobs that's so uh but anyway, you know, Portia commenting on, you know, that's my baby and all that stuff. And then Shamia like, look at y'all, that's so cute. And then she responds to Shamia talking about some, you are the best matchmaker ever or something like that. I said, wait a fucking minute. So y'all was clubbing with Fallon. Y'all was kicking it with Fallon. Y'all was all up in Fallon's house or whatever. And then Shamia is the main bitch that put them hoes together. Portia and goddamn Fallon. That is some grab. Everybody's grabbing. Let me tell you something. Portia, you a punk ass bitch if you decide not to come back to Bravo uh, for Real Housewives of Atlanta, which I feel like she's not going to do. She's going to show up, okay, because she's going to ride this publicity train, okay? She's going to ride it. And she's going to try to defend herself. And I said, bitch, it really ain't no defending, okay? It's really not no defending. Um, because bitch, y'all owe it to us as the public because y'all had us sit through that whole dry ass season 13 with barely no fucking real drama. And, and, and now we want the real drama. Okay. We want to relive this shit in real fucking time. Well, in play real time on TV so we can talk shit about your ass. Okay. I need to see everybody else reaction. Don't punk out, bitch. Don't pull a Monique. Okay. I'm cause truth be told. 
uh, I need somebody to come out and tell me that Monique got fired. Because, bitch, after that season that she had, and I granted, you know, I understand people probably didn't want to film with her or whatever. But still, I would have stuck my ground, at least demote me to friend of the show like they did Portia when she got into her first fight or whatever. And then they kind of demoted her a little bit and then they gave her her pitch back like a couple of seasons later. Do that, bitch. You could have did that. You ain't have to fucking run away, dumbass. Okay, like, Monique, you made me mad like that. You made me mad. I don't like people that do that. Okay? You ran away with your tail tucked between your legs and then you doing all this other shit. Bravo trying to censor me. Bitch, ain't nobody trying to censor your ass. Okay? Like... I sent the trailer for The Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay, it's going to be good. I think I might like the new girl. Okay, uh, Wendy giving it to Miss Giselle. Mm-hmm. Wendy is finally seeing what it is. Candace is into it with somebody else yet again. That bitch is into it with every fucking body. Each and every fucking season that she's been on here. She's been going at it with everybody. But I don't know how the shit started. But the new girl did throw that shit at her first. So, you know, I'm going to give it to her. But once again, she's into it with somebody. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I hope the girls learn to keep their hands to themselves, okay? But, yeah, y'all tell me how y'all feel. Um, This is a sad story, and I really hope that his name is Dottarvius Barnes. Out here in Illinois, Um, this happened last year, April 6, 2020. He was um, placed into handcuffs. He got pulled over. He told the cops that he did have some weed in the car, gave him permission to, you know, look and all that stuff or whatever. They put him in handcuffs and they was going through his car or whatever. And they found his baby daughter. I think she was like um, two years old. Two years old. Her ashes. She was cremated and he had a little urn or whatever uh that he put the ashes in i've never seen an urn that small or whatever but it looked like remember what um if you watch pose when pray tell said put it like in a necklace or something to give to everybody so everybody can have a piece that's what it seemed like and so these this is how crooked let me tell you something this is illinois illinois is a crooked ass state crooked ass state okay if you watch the shot and the shit that went down on that episode that's 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 the cops out here, okay? I mean, a lot of places, but for real, for real, out here in Chicago, out here in Illinois, it, it, yeah, it's a mess. They literally was about to put this man in jail and say that he had not only weed on him, but he had some drugs that tested for, uh, I think he said meth or something like that. Let me let me get the um, actual stuff. tested positive for meth or ecstasy and i'm sitting here like wait a minute what and i saw the video i saw the body cam and he was compliant and when they said he was he was calm cool collected but when they said and showed that urn or whatever you know a little like a little nexus or whatever the way he responded he was like no 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 that's my daughter that's my daughter my heart dropped and my heart just felt and i, I really just wanted to hug that man because the pain that came out of him when he saw that. They was trying to pull a trick. Like, how the fuck you going to say you tested it and it came back as meth or ecstasy? First of all, you couldn't even give me which one it was. Okay? You said meth or ecstasy. So, how the fuck you know that? What test did you actually do? And they actually wasted some of her ashes. He was like, that's my daughter, that's my daughter. And the backstory on the daughter is the daughter passed away from neglect from the mother. She was only two years old. And it was a good thing that his father was out there, you know, because when they was like, okay, I believe you, I believe you. And it took too long for them to believe him, if you ask me. And they gave the urn to the father, whatever, that he still was going to go to jail for whatever violation that he he committed and telling them that they had weed in the car or whatever, even though weed is legal out here in Chicago. But depending on how much that he had, I mean, out here in Illinois, depending on how much he had, I guess, I don't know. But that, that made me sad. I said, that's fucked up. You was trying to lie on that man and say that he had meth and ecstasy. This goes to show that the cops really ain't shit sometimes. Not all of them, but most of them, some of them ain't, they ain't shit. You was going to put that down on his record to get him more time and all that shit. All because you didn't test it and he you didn't take the man's word for what it was. Like, why would he have to lie about something like that? That is crazy. But I, and he's suing. And I hope he win. I really do. But, um... 
At first, I thought it was heroin. Then I checked for cocaine, but it looked like it was probably Molly. You done went through three fucking different drugs for some ashes because you thought instead of just going ahead and testing or taking the man's word. <sighs> anyway, I can't. Moving on from that, and another nigga that I came with, Calvin, a.k.a. Kevin Hunter. We've heard so much more about and from this nigga than we've ever heard when he was with Wendy Williams. <laughs> I just don't understand. So, he is just doing the most. And he has a vendetta against Charlamagne the God. Okay? Uh, it's this basketball player, Kwame, that was going back and forth and having a little beef. Uh, what's his name? Kwame Brown. He was having a beef with uh, Matt Burns, another basketball player. They was going back and forth or whatever. Charlamagne God took it upon himself to say on air, I see um, talking about some leave Kwame Brown alone. Um, he went on to speak of a rumor from his area because they're both from the same place in South Carolina about Kwame's father allegedly killing his girlfriend with an axe handle and his brother committing uh, suicide. And, you know, Charlemagne talked about some, I'm just saying, leave him alone because he don't bother nobody. Clearly, all that he is is a bust. What? Yeah, he hasn't bothered nobody. You know, he's been quiet for 20 years. And then you went on ahead and continued to put out this information that we didn't need to know. Okay, that was wrong on Charlemagne's part. First of all, I know it's our job to, you know, in his job or whatever, to relay the gossip or whatever that's going on about in, in the news and shit like that, entertainment. Okay, that's understandable. But stick to what was being said. Why did you have to bring up this particular, you know, situation? And then you got Kevin Hunter coming out and talking about some, basically, you know, I got some real scary truths about you that I can reveal and all this stuff or whatever. And because Kwame came back at Charlemagne talking about some, you know, accusing him of rip, uh, raping a 15-year-old girl. We've heard this story before, okay? And then, you know, Kevin Hunter coming out, basically trying to make it seem like he got some dirt on Charlemagne. He got some audio. He can release this. He can release that. Next thing you know, fuck Master Flex, dumbass. Oh, I cannot stand him. How has he gotten as far as he's gotten? Okay? He is mad annoying. I just could not. I would turn the station if I was ever in New York or wherever he play at and not give him the time of day. Like, he, he is the most emotional ass fucking DJ New Yorker that I've ever fucking seen. Like, I'm surprised the nigga ain't stroked out as much as he be hollering and shit and how passionate he be getting over shit that even got nothing to do with him. Okay, he goes on his rants. It's so irritating. And once again, he throws himself into the midst of this issue that ain't had nothing to do with him. Uh, he plays uh, the audio of the alleged 15-year-old girl uh, who was um, at the time 15. I think this happened in 2001 or something like that. Uh, that, you know, had accused Charlemagne of, you know, sexually molest, uh, raping her or whatever. Um, and the mother and, you know, that whole thing. And I'm just sitting here like, why are you involved in this? So I figure, you know, Kevin is the one that gave Funk Master Flex this. Why would you even take that upon yourself and put that out there? Both of y'all asses is wrong as shit. Okay. Because we know the story. He was accused of, you know, um, having a party and giving the girl alcohol or some shit like that and the girl got uh, sexually assaulted or whatever and you know she accused Charlemagne of doing it and the DNA came back saying that you know there was no sign of rape uh or at least semen uh whether in her vaginal cavity or her rectal cavity or oral or anything like that um his DNA wasn't on it but you know he was charged and given three years probation or something like that because he was at a party that provided alcohol to a 15 year old or he threw a party that provided alcohol to a 15 year old okay so he didn't even get charged with the uh sexual assault slash rape he didn't get charged with that because DNA or whatever the evidence can prove that not saying that he didn't do it or that he didn't have a condom or anything they just couldn't prove it and they didn't find any signs of it on the girl when they did the exam. So knowing that, why would you put this out here? 
And so we get Charlemagne coming out, apologizing, giving himself the donkey of the day because Kwame put a video out basically saying the shit that you said about my father, you know, killing somebody and boy, my brother committed suicide and shit like that. He was never told, so he didn't know nothing about that. And you're hurting a lot of people because now you're dredging up a whole bunch of stuff that they probably didn't put it behind. And now they got to hear this big broadcast all up on the news, on, on, on the radio and everything, and people in the media talking about it. And so you're hurting his family. You're hurting the victim's family. You're hurting that. And it's the same thing with um freaking Funkmaster Flex. Now, see, the one thing that I can give, you know, Charlemagne, yeah, he didn't have to come out to apologize, but he should have, and he did. Um, it was, you know, backpedaling as, as that's what it was. He was backpedaling because Kwame got in that ass and he knew that he was wrong. But Funk Master Flex, you could be affecting a girl that um said that she got raped by him. You could be affecting her mama and bringing up all these triggering her by playing that audio and releasing it back to the public like that. Are you going to issue that family an apology? Probably not. All of this is just messed up because I'm pretty sure I know the history between Charlemagne and Funkmaster Flex. I'm pretty sure they don't like each other, or at least Funkmaster Flex don't fuck with Charlemagne. And that's probably a multitude of people that don't fuck with Charlemagne, and it's understandable. But both of them was wrong as shit. Wrong as shit, okay? Like, you don't put nobody's personal shit on blast without them knowing, and you don't even know if they know it. And then you don't put somebody's shit that's... Girl, it's... It, Grown ass men, grown ass fucking men, and Kevin, go deal with your new baby and your uh sideline bitch. Okay, that's what you need to do. All right, still ain't married that hoe, have you? Have you, girl? Fuck out of here. A mess, a mess, a mess. Um, Tracy Ellis Ross, you know, in a new um interview that she did with Marie Claire magazine. She was basically talking about the pressure that is placed on women about having kids. You know, she said at one point she did want to have kids, but she not in no rush to have kids. Why she need to be in a rush? Okay, because it's what society says and all this shit. You know, she like, bitch, I'm finna be out here and I'm finna do what I gotta do. If I had kids, I had kids. Because at one point she wanted to be married and had kids and shit like that. Sometimes it don't work out. The plans don't work that way. And then we just be like, fuck it, I'm living life and I'm having a good time. If it happens, it happens. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, society do put a lot of pressure on that. I'm so glad I am living in a day and age where it literally is not looked upon as women always got to, oh, this is your role. This is your role. You supposed to have these kids and you supposed to do that. No, bitch. Okay, I would get it excommunicated from the community because I would have been like, no. You're not going to tell me what to do. Oh, bitch, I'm so glad. I, I was born in the right period because my mouth and my attitude, girl, a mess. Then talking about some more drama with kids. Um, Caesar from Black Ink Crew. This is exactly why I stopped reviewing it. I have been watching the uh, episodes or whatever when I don't have nothing to watch. I don't watch it when it first comes on. I probably watch it as background noise when um, I'm at work, doing work, you know, putting books away and shit like that. So, one of the storylines, and I kind of figured he was going to do this. I don't like the fact that he brought it up because, but I knew he was going to bring it up if it was part of his reality. But it seems because of the whole situation, very exploitive, feeling like, you know, you're trying to make it seem as if you're really the good guy and you're really the victim in this situation um, with uh, the issue that was going on between him and his daughter and him allegedly uh, supposedly had been abusing her and hitting her had hit her punched her or something like that while she was in a shower all because she back talked to him and said he she wasn't gonna do the dishes or something like that and it's a mess you know and he's on tv i need to talk to my daughter and i can't i don't understand how it feels to have you know your child hate you and all this stuff or woo 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 and i'm so glad that teddy sat down with that nigga and told him because after that shit went down and when that bitch of a girlfriend came out and was just talking the shit that she was talking about the daughter, Teddy sat down and said she shouldn't have opened up her mouth and said shit. She shouldn't have went back and forth. What gives her the fucking right? I was here for her. For once, I was here for that nigga. I said, I know that's the fuck right. He says you need to handle that bitch because that ain't fucking right. Okay? Now, Crystal, Crystal, the mama, she done came out against his ass and basically trying to say that he basically using this for 
uh, TV purposes and he lying and all this stuff. And, you know, she went on live and said what she had to say and all that going against him. And, um, you know, he was trying to say that the girl, the daughter is being brainwashed by the mama. She came out and said, no, bitch, I'm not being brainwashed by nobody. Okay. This is my own thoughts and this is how I feel. Fuck you. Okay. And so he sends out a letter from her uh, attorney that shows that um Caesar served their daughter Cheyenne and the child the Department of Children Protective Services with a cease and desist letter to prevent pre prevent them from talking about the incident. And if they can't talk about it, why are you on TV talking about it? You exploiting this whole situation to try to make yourself look better in it, okay? And ain't no ifs and about it. I'm going to believe the child, all right? I'm going to believe the child. That is a young girl, too. And if it was a boy, I would have believed it, too. Because, you know, people look, people get on TV and they portray themselves to be one way and then really be a fucking asshole in real life. But, you know, if you're doing all this cease and desist shit, something ain't right, okay? Um, I'm on, I'm on Crystal and the kids shot. I'm on them sides. Just probably because I really don't like him. But, um, you know, I got to take my feelings out. But the situation just didn't sit right. And what really made me be on their side is the fact that when the girlfriend came out and said what she said, instead of going over there or putting out, you know, that he going to try to make it right with his daughter, which I think he did do that. The very next day, he out bowling and shit with the um girlfriend. Either it was that night or the next day, he out bowling and shit with the girlfriend. She giving him promise rings and shit like we two years old. And I'm sitting here like, what the fuck? Your daughter just kills you of putting your hands on her and you out here with this bitch that just came for your daughter. It ain't me. It wouldn't have been me. It wouldn't have been me. You know, and mind you, mind you, him and that girl only been dating for a year. I don't give a fuck. You ain't finna talk to my child. You ain't been in the game long enough to be talking to my child like that. You ain't got stepmama privileges. And even if you had stepmama privileges, you not finna be talking to her like that. Bitch, fuck out of here. Anyway, moving on from that, Versus. So the Versus is coming up this weekend, I believe, for Memorial Day weekend. Bitch, it is Memorial Day. I got Monday off. I really do hope I get some good news this week. Oh my God, if I get that apartment, bitch. <laughs> it's over for you hoes. No, never stop. It's, <laughs> I'm going to feel so good. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it in God's hand and I'm just going to try to think positive because at this point, I did all that I could do with it. Oh. Anyway, moving away. Versus Timberland and Swiss's Beats. Swiss Beats are doing a little rematch thing coming up this weekend, I believe. Girl, I don't even know if I really want to watch it. And then Soldier Boy came out. Remember when I was telling y'all about the Soldier Boy Bow Wow situation? He came out talking about some them two finna do a versus together. I'm gonna watch that shit for some reason. I just want to watch it, okay? You know, cause I ain't even gonna lie. I like Soldier Boy before I knew that he was abusive as shit. I like Soldier Boy back in the day, cause he had everybody Superman that hoe. Watch me, yo, okay, bitch, crank that bitch, you know, crank that Superman, you know. Uh, and Bow Wow, little Bow Wow, you just don't know the way you move so across the floor. Or oh, all I wanna do is see it's the beat to the old dub. <laughs> bounce with me, bounce with me. <laughs> I just give y'all a whole concert. I had to stop myself, like, girl, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. But anyway, I'm going to be in that thing whenever they do it. Um, Bashir Gray, Lil Hakeem from Empire. Y'all remember the story that went out about him abusing his wife and, you know, she had to run to the gas, uh, gas station to get help or whatever because he was abusing her, beating her ass for hours in the house. Yeah, so they had arrested him and basically they sentenced him to 10 days in county jail. Um, he has been ordered to pay restitution and to enroll in a domestic offender treatment. Um, he also has been on probation, put in a bro probation program for three years. Listen, listen, they had to get SWAT to take his ass out his house. That's how bad the situation got. I don't know what it is about Empire, but the only person that came out of Empire that was really doing good out of the kids is, um, what was the big, uh, the big crazy one? I ain't gonna say dumb because he won. Who married Grace in real life? Girl, after Grace killed his wife on the show, what was his name? Andre. 
Girl, yeah. He the only one that we don't hear no drama about. Okay, Jussie, he we forget all we ain't forget, but he 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 he's finally shutting his ass up and keeping a low profile bitch. But we ain't forget what your lying ass did. Okay. Trying to convince a bitch that's from Chicago that know how Chicago work and who works down there, them them motherfuckers was out there lies. Okay, it was nobody out there on the street. It's making me mad all over again. Let me move forward. And let me move forward. I said, bitch. You mean to tell me you went out in sub-zebra weather to go get you a fucking subway? And what? Nigga, please. Anyway, moving on from that. Malik Beasley. Remember the one that was with his wife, Montana? Yo, okay? And then started fucking around with Larza Pittman? Yeah, him. And had publicly dissed the wife and all this shit. Tried to say that they were separated, which they really wasn't. You know, she filed for divorce. He out there fucking around with Larza. Larza trying to say, well, when I got with him, he was separated. Then she tried to change it up and say that I didn't know he was with anybody or whatever. Girl, he put out a little post trying to basically woo the uh, wife back talking about I apologize it was me being young minded and everything and you know I wasn't in the right space or whatever you know woo 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 I just want you to come back I want to come back and have a family with you and our kids or whatever because remember he wanted a DNA test he wanted a DNA test for the kid I said bitch you's a dog okay so I said it's a little too late for me let me tell you something let me tell you something Montana you a dumb bitch if you take that you know and when I say take that that means if you go back to that shit okay because now you looking stupid as fuck going back and forth with Larsa Pittman Pippin bitch why 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 you won in this situation you won the public respect in this situation we know Larsa track history okay she was still with Pip, uh, Scotty Pippen. I don't even care if they was in a midst of getting divorced or separated or whatever. They still technically was legally married while she was fucking around with this young boy. And, and when you found out that he had a family, you did not stop. And then, you know, Montana came at her ass. And then Liza want to come back and say, first of all, I didn't want to be with somebody who always cried. Second of all, he was too broke for me. And third of all, why would I want to be with somebody who um, would disrespect the mother of his kids and leave his kids and his mother's uh, the mother? mother kids kids uh penny list or whatever the thing that i got you need to worry about um when you bringing up my kids and all this shit at least my kids won't have to know that my their father didn't want them bitch your kids who are boys okay they know that their mother is a whore and i hate to call women whores but in this situation Larza moves like a whore, okay? She been trying to keep up with the Kardashians. They kicked her ass out because she was up there fucking they niggas, a.k.a. Tristan, okay? And then, you know, just being shady, all right? You're fucking on little boys and stuff or little men, little men. That's what it is. And we ain't gonna say boy because that sound nasty. But little men, you know what I'm saying? You, you a home wrecker. Mm, you can't really wreck a home if it wasn't already together. But you out here doing foul shit, okay? Trying to make it seem like you're the innocent one. What I don't respect about this whole situation is the women going back and forth at each other. Montana, you shouldn't even have to, to fuck that bitch, okay? You said what you said in response to him. Don't even pay no mind to that bitch, okay? Because she knew, and even if she knew, it's more so on his responsibility because he knew that he was in the, he was married to your ass, okay? So, say yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you back in because our son need a goddamn father. But other than that, that's where the buck stops, okay? Do not go back to that man. Do not get makeup dick from that man. Don't do none of that, okay? Get you a new one, alright? And put the nigga on child support. That's what you fucking do, bitch. Anyway, moving on from that, congratulations to Fantasia and her husband, um, Kendall. They gave birth to their baby girl it seemed like she was pregnant forever uh Keziah Taylor and I know they had a scare recently but um thank god everything is okay congratulations to um Solange you know she got her Saint Huron uh little thing going on with highlighting unnamed artists and underrated artists and she's doing more so with it you know with culture arts and stuff like that she's just opening up for a whole bunch of stuff she's expanding her little empire i love the way solange move okay beyonce moving silent but um we still know when she doing some shit like she got a big corporation behind her she got a big machine behind her but it is something about solange machine because it's not so big and it's literally like independent and underground but she be making it work she makes it work i just love it 
Oh, anyway, and then, you know, Tina, you know, there was the Billboard Awards this past Sunday. I watched. I didn't care. It wasn't bad, you know. Uh, Alicia Keys did her thing. I, I ain't even gonna lie. Songs on A minor. That was my motherfucking album. When my mama brought me that album, bitch, I played that motherfucker out. That first album. Oh my god. I was going through some things as a kid, bitch. And then every fucking song spoke to me. I said yes. I think I had a crush on Alicia Keys. And then she went straight. And then the crush was gone. Um, just like her voice. Um, but she did a good job. She did a good job. Um. Anyway, Tina had put out there, yes, my daughters are out here doing something, you know, Beyonce's working on a surprise. And I said, girl, why you put her tea out there? Even though we knew, I told y'all to get ready. She said, the girls are coming. The girls are coming. Okay, now she said all three of her girls. Now, I don't know if that meant Bianca, Beyonce, and Solange or um, Solange, Beyonce, and Kelly. Kelly, girl, I want you to do something else. I don't know if music is... I, I, I'm not going to do that. The video is almost over with. Um, anyway, congratulations to Solange. Listen, Erica and Safari, I want to end this shit. And you want to know why uh, Wendy Williams said the shit that she said about your ass, Erica. Erica, because of this. You put out there in public that you and your man are having fucking issues and get mad when motherfuckers comment, give public opinion on public shit that you put out there. You got upset at Wendy because she said some shit about your relationship. She kind of criticized it because of the simple fact that y'all be going back and forth, back and forth, whether y'all together or not, together or not, and now you're already pregnant for the second time. And now you put on a post, a comment to somebody basically saying that, implying that it was some issues going on in the house or that, you know, Safari don't live there no more or whatever. And now you put out there that you filed for divorce. Okay, she won't custody or at least physical custody, but she's cool with joint custody. Um, she won't him to pay child support. Baby, get the fuck out of my face. Okay, they remind me of Ray J and Princess. I'm going to divorce you this day and then I'm going to take it back next week and then I'm going to do it my turn this day and then I'm going to take it back next week and we're going to be all to the good. Bitch, get away from me. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all week, okay? I will put this up on a regular day, so don't worry about it. And um, I hope y'all have a good time. I hope y'all are using your um, sunscreen, okay? SPF. SPF, girls. I don't care if you're black. You still need to put the SPF on your skin, all right? It needs to be protected. Um, and, you know, be safe out there. Lotion up. Don't nobody want no ashy bitch in the summer, okay? And put a little pad on there, you know what I'm saying? Just so that, you know, it can draw up some little sweat. Not too much that when you touch it, it just come out or whatever. I'm gonna give you some tips. Hydrate water, okay? More so that, especially if you're gonna be drinking alcohol, balance it out. You know what I'm saying? We don't need you to pass out, all right? Um, mask up if you can. Um, and just have a good time, okay? But just be safe. All right, girls and guys, I will see you guys later. Peace.